Good morning, St. Matthew's family. I want to take this opportunity to thank you for joining with us this morning. I would also like to thank you uh, for the welcome that you have shown and expressed to me and my family this past week. I look forward to getting to know you in person. I also want to take this opportunity to thank you for your kindness and generosity to the church. Your gifts allow us to continue to be in mission and ministry in our community and around the world. Because you continue to support the church, we're able to offer virtual Sunday school, vacation Bible school, and Bible classes uh, for folks to join in with us. We're also able to continue to serve those who are in need in our community. So again, thank you for your generosity to your church. I continue to, I encourage you, to, you can edit that out, right? I encourage you to continue to support the mission and ministry of our church during this difficult time. Your gifts allow us to make a difference in our neighborhood. Thank you. Well, good morning. It's good to be with you this morning, and I add my greetings. I'm Bill Moberly. I'm one of the pastors here at St. Matthew's, and I'm here to uh, share a few announcements with you. Uh, some of you at home may be saying, hey, Bill, what are you doing up there giving announcements? Well, I think our first announcement will clarify that. Uh, we are so blessed and so joyful that um, Pastor Nikki's baby came into the world this past week, Sophie Michelle Howard. She was born at 1.47 p.m. on July 7th. She's with us, and we, uh, we just rejoice with the family. Now, when we have babies in the church family, we oftentimes put a rosebud up on the altar in commemoration of the birth. But for Nikki, we put together an entire bouquet, which is up there. So beautiful. So we thank, thank everyone who put that together. Uh, we had flowers last week as well, and those were given in honor of the Plaster family, and they're, uh, they're joining us together in mission here at St. Matthew's, so that's where those flowers came from. We also have uh, three different food baskets this week. We had two baskets donated in celebration of John and Samantha Kennard's 20th wedding anniversary on July 1st by Sandy Sears and Bill House. So, Kennard family in Korea, we give our greetings and congratulations on your 20th anniversary. Every week we receive a food basket in memory of Frankie Hall, given faithfully by her husband Bob. We do have one in sympathy we have to share with you, and that is that uh, on June 20th, Marjorie Harmon, a long-term member here at St. Matthew's, passed away. We unfortunately don't have any details to share at this time, but we can certainly lift up Marjorie's family, um, her daughter, Sandra, and the rest of the family in prayer this week. So please keep them in mind. There's some very exciting news uh, that we received a check from Church Mutual Insurance this week. $725 donation to the Joy Fund, which will go a long way in helping us to continue that vital ministry. We've again served over 1,100 people through this walk-in ministry in these very challenging times. So we are very excited to have received that gift. So thank you. Well, welcome again to worship. Let us go to God in prayer. Gracious God, we come before you to worship you and sing your praises. Allow your Holy Spirit to open our hearts and minds today so that we may receive your word both within our hearts and our minds. Make clear for us today what you would have us hear, where you would have us go, and whom we may serve. May your word uplift and inspire us to go out to the world to be your loving ambassadors today and always. We pray this in the mighty name of Jesus who goes with us on our journey. Amen.
Good morning, I'm Kara Steubing, the Director of Family Ministries. Um, I am so excited to be able to bring you the children's message this morning from my home. I thought since uh, I was able to uh, video from my home, I would share with you something I've had in my home for a very long time. Um, I have this puzzle, and uh, it is a puzzle that I got as a child. Uh, the pieces are, are very loose. Um, and I love this puzzle because it's got different colors to it. I've always loved the smell of it. It's made out of wood um, and it's handmade uh, by an artisan. I got this at a craft fair in Pennsylvania. Um, so that is, uh, that is something that I love. It's moved with me from house to house uh, ever since I was a child. Um, and one of the things I hear that Pastor Mike is gonna be talking about today is being a part of the body of Christ. Um, and so one of the ways I like to think about being a part of the body of Christ, being a part of a community of believers, uh, being a part of a church, uh, is to think of it as a puzzle. So the great thing about this is that it is also a puzzle. And uh, when we take the pieces out of our star, it looks a little bit empty. And uh, it looks like maybe it needs some, uh, some things in it. It looks like um, it's still cool, still cool shape, um, but you guys saw it as whole and as with all the colors in it. Um, and so this puzzle, um, even though it looks really simple, it's kind of challenging because if you flip this piece around, there is no way to fit it in the puzzle. And that's the one I always like to start with uh, because it's kind of tricky. And um, as you add pieces to this star, you can see it becomes more beautiful and more complete. And that's what I like to think of when I think of us all coming together to make um, St. Matthew's complete, uh, to make the world complete, um, to if we all do our part and fill in our piece of the puzzle um, and we do it to the very best that we can, then it's a much more beautiful picture, isn't it? Um, and so that's something I like to think of when I think of uh, the community of believers, the body of Christ, um, and I'm excited to be able to share this with you because, uh, like I said, it's something I've had for a very uh, long time and is very special to me. So, uh, so thanks for, for listening to me. Let's, let's join God in prayer. God, thanks so much uh, for making us each unique, um, giving us the opportunity to fill up our own piece of the puzzle and to be part of something bigger than ourselves. God, we thank you that uh, we are each a part of the community of believers within St. Matthew's. We thank you that we are each a part and a unique place within our family at home. And God, we just pray that you would remind us to be the best we can be in the piece of the puzzle that we are in so that we can help complete the beautiful picture that you have of us. In your name we pray. Amen. As we prepare to receive the word, let us go to God in prayer. Almighty and ever loving God, we praise you for the mighty works of your hands that we see all around us, for the gift of your son Jesus, and for your faithful and loving presence in our lives. Lord, we know that we often fall short in the things we say and do and the things we leave undone. We stand convicted before you. Save us from ourselves and the powers of darkness that roar around us, seeking to distance us from you. Forgive us, strengthen us, and pour out your Holy Spirit upon us so that we may be the people you have called us to be in this hurting and broken nation and world. Nudge us into action and help us fulfill your plan and share your love with others. Lord, we have joys all around us, and we celebrate and give thanks for the birth of Sophia and ask that you be close to Pastor Nikki and Christian as they grow in their new family. There are many other joys among us that we celebrate and give thanks for to you. Help us to always remember the joys we have because we often forget to see the good in difficult times. Some among us are struggling with depression, isolation, 
fear, illness, family strife, and loss. And we especially lift up the family and friends of Marjorie Harmon as they celebrate her life and grieve her. We are grateful for her 40 years of communion with us here at St. Matthew's. We lift all of the worrisome things in our lives to you and your infinite wisdom and healing hands. Hear the cries of our hearts as we share a moment of silence. Lord, we place our trust in you and claim the many promises that you have made to your people. We trust that you walk with us in all times and in all places and are our mighty fortress on whom we can depend. We trust that there is no power in heaven or on earth that can separate us from your love. We claim the victory of Jesus over death and pray the prayer that he taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
the opportunity this morning to share with you something that's very near and dear to my heart. It is my understanding of what the church is and how we're supposed to be as the body of Christ in the world in which we live today. We know from Acts chapter 2 that on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit fell and the believers were filled with awe and wonder and the people around them were amazed at what God was doing. The story continues in Acts chapter 2 to verse 43, and I want to share with you verses 43 through 47 this morning. Awe came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all who had need. Day by day, as they spent time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. Let us pray. God, you are good and faithful. Your word is true. We're grateful that your word still speaks to us today. And God, I ask now that as we share that word together, that you would open our hearts and our minds that we might receive what it is that you say to us. That you might prepare us, O oh God, to be faithful followers and disciples. To be faithful and active members of the church, the body of Christ. And God, I pray that as your word is proclaimed, that you would put me aside. That people might see and hear you above all. That your kingdom might be revealed. That your kingdom might come in our world. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. So many people in our world today have a tendency to believe and say even that the church is irrelevant. And there may be many of you who would think that we are headed towards that time and place in history. But I, however, still believe in the power and the purpose of the church. I believe that God still has much work for us to do in this world in which we live in. There are so many people around us whose lives are in chaos and turmoil, and more, and now, more than ever, God needs us to be the body of Christ like we've never been the body of Christ before. In the passage of Scripture that I shared with you, it says that those who encountered the disciples were in awe and wonder of what God was doing in the world. Today, I long for a time when those around us stand in awe and wonder of the mighty works that the church is doing in our world and our community. We have moved to a place of complacency where we just kind of float along, where we come to worship, where we hear the word, we sing our songs, we say the prayers that we know. But there is something more to being the body of Christ in our world today. And I think it is so important for us to be reminded in this time, in this season of urgency, that we take seriously Christ's commandment and commission to you and I to be the hands and feet, to be the church, the body of Christ in the world in which we live. I want to share with you what I long for the church. First of all, I think that if we're going to be an effective church in the community, we have to be a praying church. Would anybody agree with that? We need to be a church that is committed to pray. And when I say pray, I don't mean we give God a list of demands and expect God to step up and fulfill those demands. I mean that we go to God and say, God, what is it that you need me to do to help bring your kingdom into our world in this current day and time? I believe that we need to be praying for the healing of those who are sick, for restoration of relationships. And we need to be praying for joy to fill our hearts and lives again. I believe that there is power in prayer. I also believe that when God's people unite together in prayer, there is no stopping the transformation and healing and restoration that can take place. I believe that prayer should be the underlying foundation of every single thing that we do as the church. It should be the underlying foundation of every decision that we make as the body of Christ. And we need to spend constant time in prayer and communion with God, listening to God's direction for ways that we can be in service, ways that we can show compassion, ways that we can offer hope and joy in our world today. 
Another aspect, I believe, that is important for the church is that we spend time in worship. I know that many of you are having a really hard time with the kind of worship that we're participating in. But I want to remind you that where God's people are gathered, one or two or three or a hundred and three, God's Spirit is present. So this morning, if you believe, if you are thinking or doubting that this is true worship, please rest assured that this is worship that honors God. We're still gathering, even though we are distance. Distance. But I, like you, long for a day and a time when we can safely gather again, where we can worship together, because there is nothing like the people of God being together in one place with one mind and working toward one common goal. God's Spirit moves and works in mighty, powerful ways. And I believe that even where you are this morning, that God's Spirit can move and work in your life to bring about hope and restoration of relationships, to fill you with a sense of joy and peace in the middle of all the chaos that is our current world. But like you, I long to look out and see your faces in this place. To join with you as we pray together, sing together, laugh together, cry together. But until that happens, let us continue to worship together on Sunday mornings in our homes. As we seek a day and a time when we can be together again in our beautiful sanctuary. Another thing that I think is important for the body of Christ is something that for most of us will probably be a, another aspect that I believe that is important in the life of the congregation is something that the early church participated in. And I know that most of us enjoy probably more than we're willing to admit. The early church liked to get together and fellowship together. Their fellowship always included food. We like food, don't we? There's something about breaking bread together. There's something about sitting down at the table with people that we're trying to get to know. For around the table, we hear people's stories. We journey with them in life. And we're given the opportunity to love and support those people that we are getting to know. One of the things I especially like about eating together is this. Sometimes, and I don't believe that it's true here at St. Matthew's, but sometimes church people are critical of one another. But I have discovered that it is awfully hard to be critical of someone when you're sitting across the table from them with a piece of broccoli stuck between your front teeth. <laughs> so fellowship and food are important. I believe in the life of the congregation. It's around that table, as we break bread together, that we truly get to know and respect and love and care for each other. Another thing that I think is key to the life of an effective congregation, a church that bears witness, a church that offers hope and help to the world, and that's this thing. For me, it is people being willing to stand up and serve one another. In the passage of Scripture that I share with you this morning, we read in the book of Acts that the disciples and the believers gathered together and they shared their possessions. One version says they sold everything that they had and pulled their money together and took care of one another. Now, some of you might be saying, if you're going to ask me to do that, you're pushing the line. I'm not going to ask you to sell everything that you have in order for us to take care of people. But what I'm going to ask you to do, what I want to challenge you to do, is to do all that you can, to give all that you're able to give, to help those who are in need in our community. There are so many people in our world today who are hurting, who are hungry, who need the ability to get to work and a little bit of money for gas goes a long way. I believe that by working together, by pooling our resources, we can make a huge difference in the St. Matthew's community, but we can also make a huge difference around the world. As you get to know me, one of the things that you will soon learn is that I am passionate about missions, and I'm excited to know that St. Matthew's is passionate about missions as well. 
Because all around us, there are people who are in dire need. You might say, we live in a very affluent country, and we do. Some people would even say we live in an affluent neighborhood, and we do. But even there, even now, there are people whose lives are on the brink, who are living from paycheck to paycheck. Some people who are wondering where their next meal is coming from because of layoffs due to COVID and all. The reality that we're facing with our current economic situations. But I believe that together we can make a difference for each one of those persons' lives. And I have discovered that through the years, a church that is committed to caring for its neighbors and to caring for the world is a church on fire and a church that can make a difference in their community. I want to share with you a brief story about one such church. In 1996, I was transferred from rural southwest Virginia to the Shenandoah Valley to serve four churches on the outskirts of the town of Elkton. And in uh, September of that year, Hurricane Fran came through. Hurricane Fran brought a lot of destruction to the community surrounding particularly two of those churches. Houses were washed away. Roads were non-existent. Helicopters were flying in, needed supplies. People had gathered at the church under the picnic shelter for safety. I was unaware of how bad the devastation was, but because I had been out of town helping my mom prepare for the hurricane, because where she lived was supposed to get, hard, get hit hard. The storm skipped over her. But when I returned to Elkton, I got a phone call and said, there are people hanging out under the picnic shelter. What are you going to do about it? And my response was, well, why are they hanging out under the picnic shelter? And they said, you don't know what happened? And I said, no. And so they said, come to the church. I went to the church and pulled in the parking lot, and people were everywhere. It looked like that many of them had been there for days, and they had. And the person who had called me on the phone and said, what are we going to do about this? met me there and they stood beside me looking at those people many who had lost their homes and their possessions and I said what we're going to do is open up the church because these people need us right now more than ever and one of those church members looked at me and said there have been floods here before and we've never ever done anything like that and I said well this is a new day and a new time and we're going to open up the church UMCOR provided uh, needed generators. We lit the church up. It quickly became a hub of service for the community. We were open literally 24 hours a day for six weeks, meeting the needs of people in our community, providing fresh water and food and telephones for them to use, places for them to get ready to go to work. Something happened in that church as a result of them opening their doors to people who were in need. Here's what happened. They began to grow exponentially. They went from being a congregation on my first Sunday of 35 people to a church of 175 when I left 10 years later. And it happened because they developed a sense of passion and commitment and dedication to others, to the people that Christ has given us to love. Some of the people that we helped showed up. But people who caught a vision of a church that was on fire, that cared about people, began to join with us. Young families and older folks, single people, they all joined together to feed the hungry, to clothe the naked. And for nearly 18 months, we worked to transform that community. We hosted weekend service teams. In the first weekend after the flood, we fed over 2,000 people in a kitchen that was no bigger than your average household kitchen. In two weeks, we had gone through two ovens and stoves. We'd burn them out trying to, trying to feed the people. But something happened. God was working because people were responding to the needs that were around. It's happening here. And my prayer is that it will continue to happen here as we continue to respond to the needs of people who are around us. God will use our service 
to our fellow human beings to bring about transformation in our hearts and in the life of this congregation. It is my prayer that God will ignite a passion for mission like never before in the hearts and lives of the people of St. Matthew's so that we can turn the world upside down, offering help and hope to our brothers and sisters who are in need. That church not only built houses, bought trailers for people. As we were working, we discovered that the community was underserved. Many of them didn't have their own wells or septic tanks. The church got busy, and in that period of 18 months, we made sure that every single home in the neighborhood had indoor plumbing and running water for many for the first time ever. And mind you, this was in 1996. The church made a difference. I want us to continue to be a church building on your rich history that makes a difference in our community in our world. It's so, so important. But beyond that, I want us to be a place of hope, a place of refuge, and a place of joy. Oftentimes, people come to church with the mindset that nothing's going to happen. I want you to come to church with the mindset that something awesome is going to happen every time we gather together as God's people. I want you to believe like I do that God's Spirit is still working in our world. That we still have work to do. Because there are countless numbers of people. People that you love and care about. People that we don't even know. Who need to hear the life transforming message of Jesus Christ. There is nothing more important in this world, in my opinion, particularly in these days and times that we live in, than for each of us to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. For us to know in our hearts that He is our Lord and Savior, and that we are filled with such joy and enthusiasm and passion because we know a Savior who has rescued and redeemed us that we want to go out into the world and share that message of transformation and hope with every single individual that we come in contact with. In Acts 2, the passage of Scripture that we share, it says, and they added to their number daily, those who were being saved. I think that we are living in days of perfect opportunity to witness to Christ, to witness to Christ's love for humanity, to be the hands and feet of Jesus in this world in such a way that people stand in awe and wonder of what God is doing because we are stepping up to the plate to be the church of Christ for a world that is broken today. I want us to take seriously the great commandment to go into the world and to make disciples of Jesus Christ. These are just a few of my hopes for St. Matthew's and for the church Universal. I believe that if we begin to practice these principles and to live into these dreams and visions, God will renew and restore the church like never before. I don't want us to miss out on the, the opportunities that we are being offered on a daily basis to make a difference for the world. So I'm asking you to join with me in praying for our church praying for our community, and praying for our world. I'm asking you to join with me in praying that we might again experience a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit in such a way that it sets our hearts ablaze, that we burn with passion and desire to be the body of Christ, to step forward in these days and to be the voice of reason, to make room at the table, 
people of all ages and nations and races and orientations. To say that God's love is real and transformational and has made a difference for us. And because we now have that joy in our hearts, we want to make a difference in the world so that others might find that peace and that hope that we have in Christ. So I ask you to pray and pray and pray some more and to seek God's will for your life and for this church. A lot of people in times of transition and new pastors come to me and say, I remember when. Maybe it was when we had the most people, when the church was the biggest, when the church was doing the most. I'm going to ask you not to do that. I'm going to ask you to join with me in looking to a future that is bigger and brighter and better than anything you can possibly imagine or anything that you can remember. Because I believe that God has put us together for such a time as this to set the world on fire with the life-changing message of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Won't you join with me? Together we can make a difference. Together we can offer Christ to the world. Let us pray. Oh God, our God, we thank you that you have been faithful through the generations, that you have blessed the churches, that you have blessed St. Matthew. But God, I am even more grateful and thankful that you have also promised St. Matthew's a future. And I believe that that future is bigger and brighter and better than anything in our past. And St. Matthew's has had a tremendous past. But God, this is a new day and a new time. And your people are hurting. Empower us in such a way to be the body of Christ that the world can see you in us and through us. This is my prayer in the name that is more powerful than any other name given in heaven or earth. The name of Jesus. Amen. Come set your
Show your mighty hand. Heal our streets and land. Set your church on fire. Church, rise up and be Christ for the world today. Let's help bring God's kingdom here and now. Go in peace. Amen. This is a family.